Shalom, shalom. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Malek Olam. Blessed is the Lord our God, King of the heavens and the earth. Amen. Yeshua, Jesus, is Lord. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, who was and is and is to come. The Lord, God Almighty, Yeshua, the Messiah. Amen. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Jesus as God Almighty. Amen. I do believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one. As found in 1 John 5, 7 of the King James Bible. Amen. Now, as a caveat to this video, uh, I will be reading from an article I put together on my website, but in no way am I saying that the rapture must happen before May 14th of 2022. Now, many of us who are watching understand that we are the fig tree generation, you know, the final generation that shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. And a lot of us have been watching uh, because of Psalms 90.10. It tells us the generation is uh, basically 70 to 80 years. And if by uh, 70 years and if by reason of strength in 80 years. And so that gives us a, a timeline of sorts. And some... Uh, so some do believe, and uh, I've been watching this as well, uh, that, you know, the rapture or the tribulation would need to start, theoretically, uh, before Israel turns 74, in order for the seven-year tribulation uh, to be within that 80-year generation. As we know that Israel, the fig tree, became a nation in 1948 in May I think it was May 14th 1948 okay so that's a, a caveat if May 14th comes and goes and we're still here uh, don't give up this is a theoretical timeline I do believe uh, the rapture is very soon and I do believe we are the final generation and we are in the final moments now this is my website, trumpetforyahweh.blogspot.com and if you go on the left hand side I have uh, pinned various different articles and if you find the one that says fig tree generation on the left hand side okay, it, that will take you to where this is this uh, article now I put this together, or I started writing it in, in January 2019 after learning about the fig tree uh, generation timeline with Psalms 9010. Uh, I knew that we were the fig tree generation before that time though. Now here we see in Matthew 24 verses 32 to 33, Jesus himself tells us, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Okay, so we, many of us believe this to mean that Israel is a fig tree, and that when Israel was brought back into their land in 1948, that that was the start of the fig tree gener generation and his branch is tender so it's putting forth leaves uh, meaning they are sort of a prosperous country uh, it's beginning to blossom so to speak and therefore uh, the the end of this age is upon us now let's see um, we also know in Romans 11 uh, I think it's Apostle Paul wrote that uh, book and he basically tells us that after the fullness of the Gentiles comes in 
uh, then God Yahweh will deal with the nation of Israel who has been blinded in part okay until the fullness of the Gentiles meaning when the fullness of the uh, church age comes to a close when as many people can be saved out of the nations through through Christ and his gospel then God will begin to deal with Israel the nation who's been blinded and therefore we know that Daniel's 70th week is Jacob's trouble but he will be saved out of it that is a remnant of Israel according to Zechariah uh, 12 and 13 the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Grace will be poured out upon Jerusalem and uh, Israel and they shall know him whom they have pierced okay and then one third will be purified and redeemed I believe after receiving Yeshua as their Messiah now granted this will be happening at the same time that the religious Jews are making a covenant with the Antichrist uh, for seven years to rebuild the third temple to start the daily sacrifices and so on and so forth that's according to Daniel 9 27 now um, let's go back to the fig tree generation it says here in Matthew 24 um, verse 3 and as he Jesus Yeshua sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world or the end of the age so therefore we know that Matthew 24 is a chapter dealing with the return of Christ and the end of this age and in Matthew 24 Jesus tells us to learn the parable of the fig tree concerning the end of the age now Um, further on in, in Matthew 24 it says this generation speaking of the fig tree generation this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away but of that day and hour knoweth no man no not the angels of heaven but my father only so again I'm not saying I know the day I'm just watching uh, as a possible watch time now, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 that we are not in darkness as the world is in darkness, so that day will not come upon us as a thief in the night. Okay, so we can know of the times and the seasons, but we don't know the exact day or hour, in my opinion. Okay, now looking back in the Old Testament, we see that Jeremiah made a comparison or a metaphor of the basket of figs being a symbol of Israel okay in Jeremiah 24 verses 2 to 6 it says one basket had very good figs even like the figs that are first ripe and the other basket had very naughty figs which could not be eaten they were so bad then said the Lord unto me what seest thou Jeremiah and I said figs the good figs very good and the evil very evil that cannot be eaten they are so evil again speaking of a uh, portion of Israel uh, the people which are good and and some which are evil okay and it says here again the word of the Lord came unto me saying thus saith the Lord the God of Israel like these good figs so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good okay that that includes of course Daniel and uh, Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and so on and so forth later on Nehemiah and Ezra okay and it says for I will set mine eyes upon them for good and I will bring them again to this land and I will build them and not pull them down and so on and so forth Now we also see Jesus himself makes a comparison between the fig tree and the nation of Israel. In Mark chapter 11, uh, you know, Jesus is basically telling us uh, a parable uh, about, well, actually, it, 
Jesus gives a parable of the uh, fig tree that is, I think, is uh, rotten or, or it's not producing fruit. And he said, you know, basically dung, uh, dig around it and place a dung around it <laughs> and give it three years and see if it produces fruit or something. But this is a different one. This one is actually talking about uh, when Christ is going into the temple and he sees a fig tree on the way. It says here uh, in Mark chapter 11, verses 13 to 22, And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it, okay? So they came to Jerusalem. Then Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. Then he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and chief, chief priests heard it, and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. And then it goes on to say, When evening had come, he went out of the city. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Now this is my conjecture. This is what I believe it means. Jesus knew his fig tree, Israel, or perhaps uh, Jerusalem, I, I think it's Israel, uh, was rotten, okay, spoiled by the hypocrite Pharisees the wicked branches which bear no good fruit. The bare branches of the fig tree was symbolic of the fruitless Israel. Jesus knew the Jews would not accept him as Messiah. According, according to Daniel 9, 25 and 26, Therefore Jesus cursed the fig tree, and it withered. This was alluding to the destruction of Israel in 70 AD for not receiving the good news of Yeshua, I believe. We also see that Jesus um, made reference to Israel being a, a, the fig tree in Luke 13, verse 6. It says, all, He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. I think that's the one where he said, you know, dig around it and put dung around it and see if it produces fruit. And then if it doesn't, then cut it off. I think speaking about the three years of his ministry. Now, here we see also in Joel chapter 1, verses 6 or 7, it says, For a nation has come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek, teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare, and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Now, there's an, another article uh, in which postulate, postulates the idea that the vine is a symbol of Israel's spiritual privileges, the fig tree is a symbol of Israel's national privileges, and the olive tree is a symbol of Israel's religious privileges. Uh, you know, I haven't really studied that out thoroughly, but that may be the case. Um, and here we see uh, sort of a diagram here. Um, so that's something to consider, okay? Now, again, I believe the Israel, the fig tree, was replanted in 1948 when Israel was brought back into the land after the Holocaust. Now, this was a prophecy uh, as you know, documented in Ezekiel chapter 36, uh, verses 6 through 11, it says, Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, 
Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen, heathen speaking to Israel. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. So here we see this uh, reference to Israel shooting forth their branches and yielding their fruit uh, to the people of Israel. Okay, so is that talking about, you know, the land coming back to life when Israel goes back into the land? That's possible. Or it could be a, a metaphor for Israel bringing forth fruit. Okay. Now, it goes on to say, For behold, I am for, for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, and all the city shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be builded, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, a prophecy of Ezekiel. Now we know that in Ezekiel 36 and 37 and 38, it's all connected to the end days. Okay, Ezekiel 38, that's a battle of Gog and Magog. And then Ezekiel 39 <clears throat> is tied directly to the return of Christ and the establish establishment of the millennial kingdom in Jerusalem on the throne of David where Christ the Messiah will sit and rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Psalms chapter 2, Zechariah chapter 14, Revelations 19 and 20. Now, further on, this is uh, speaking about, you know, Auschwitz, the death camps, and, and Hitler's Germany persecuting uh, the... the uh, the physical seed of Abraham to prevent them from going back into the promised land. That's what I think that was. I think it was a targeted attack on the prophecy of the uh, regathering of Israel for the latter days. Now, we also know that in Matthew 24 and Luke 21, it also has to do with the birth pains, okay? The end of this age is like a woman giving birth and, and the pains increase with intensity and frequency. They include, uh, you know, false Christ, wars, rumors of wars, nation versus nation, kingdom versus kingdom, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, abomination of desolation, Christian persecution, uh, so on and so forth. And, and those are all they will all increase with intensity and frequency as, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble comes, which is the painful birth of Israel. Now, here in Jeremiah 30, it talks about Jacob's trouble. Okay, it's, it's the final seven-year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. And it says here, in Jeremiah 30, Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now we also know, in the latter days, there will be the battle of Armageddon, but also there's a prophecy of Zechariah 12 where all the nations will be gathered uh, in opposition to Israel. And we see that certainly today happening. All the nations are against Israel reclaiming the promised land. They want to give the holy land to the Palestinians. Even the United Nations and Pope Francis and the United States, they all want to divide the Holy Land and give it to the enemies of Israel, which is Palestine, as well as other nations. 
Now, <clears throat> going back to the fig tree uh, generation prophecy, here's a portion where I talk about Psalms 9010 in relation to the fig tree generation, okay? So, now, this generation uh, of Psalms 9010 is 70 to 80 years. Okay, so that's basically, I think, the average lifespan of a man. And so that very well could be, because Jesus said this generation shall not pass, uh, uh, shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. So is that generation speaking of of uh, the Psalms 9010 generation of 80 years? Well, I think, I think so, probably. Uh, maybe not to the exact day and hour, um, but, you know, we definitely see that everything is prepared uh, for Daniel's 70th week, okay? Uh, basically, uh, there's distress in Israel. Uh, the government is failing. Uh, they're trying to rebuild the third temple. They're expecting their Messiah to appear and make peace and, and conquer the nations, which they will actually receive the Antichrist instead and then uh, and, and they will make the peace deal or the covenant with the Antichrist for seven years okay and then in the midst of the week the Antichrist will stop the daily sacrifices and commit the abomination of desolation which I believe is in 2 Thessalonians 2 when the Antichrist goes in the temple of God and calls himself God okay just like Antiochus Epiphanes So theoretically, if Israel became the fig tree generation in 1948, in May 1948, then technically, uh, in May 2028, the 80 years will be complete, the end of the 80th year. So therefore, the seven-year tribulation period must begin uh, by May 14th, 2022, if this is a timeline that Jesus was using or it could just be a rough a, a, a rough estimate or a rough timeline okay maybe it's not exactly precisely uh, 80 years maybe it's 81 years maybe God gives more time to the world who knows okay Now, just looking at the diagram once again, May 14th, 1948 to May 14th, 2022 would be the end of 73 years and the start of the 74th year. And then the seven year tribulation period, Daniel 927. And then May 14th, 2029, Christ would have to return because that's listed as one of the things that will happen in Matthew 24 uh, for everything to be fulfilled okay now also what's uh, interesting as well is in Psalms 90 10 it says the days of our years are three score years and ten and if by reason of strength they be four score years yet is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away <laughs> okay is this a, a, a prophecy for the final generation the fig tree generation uh, being raptured at the end or around the end of the 70 to 80 year generation very possibly it could be don't know for sure <laughs> okay so we know that Revelation 11 tells us there will be a third Jewish temple and the outer courtyard would, would be given to the Gentiles. There will be daily animal sacrifices, the Levitical priesthood, the abomination of, of desolation in the third temple, and the seven-year Antichrist covenant. Now, these are this is actual floor, pan, floor plan uh, for the third temple. This was released years ago. Okay, so basically they it seems like they have everything ready 
and people say even the Ark of the Covenant as well, uh, for the restarting of the Levitical priesthood. Okay, even the, the red cows or the red heifers uh, for the ceremonial cleansing of the priests, their ashes. Okay. Now, I think uh, that's all I wanted to go over. Uh, but here's just a quick diagram uh, for Daniel's 70th week. Okay, Daniel 927 is a week of years okay strong's h760 or h7620 is shabua is seven years or seven days and obviously it's seven years uh, within the context of the prophecy and here we see i believe the rapture will happen before the daniel 927 covenant with the antichrist probably on the heels of world war three and worldwide distress and then the antichrist false messiah will appear and make peace with israel and many nations as the white horse rider who comes with a false peace okay now the antichrist peace deal is just a it's a false peace and it'll only last for a short time until he invades israel i believe with uh, gog and magog and commits the abomination of desolation in the holy temple and then those who are in judea have to flee into the mountains of the remnant of israel for three and a half years until christ returns to bozra and uh, defeats the antichrist and the armies and uh, then there's the battle of armageddon and so on and so forth okay that's the return of christ at the end of the seven year tribulation period. Anyhow, um, I, I do believe time is very, very short. And, uh, you know, we don't know the day or hour, but we're commanded to watch. So I'm just reporting what a possible timeline could be. And uh, we'll just see if how it goes. And don't be discouraged if the rapture doesn't happen. Uh, because I, I believe it's it could happen any day. And so we have to be wrapped ready at all times. We have to be as a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Because there will be a wedding supper of the Lamb in heaven. Revelations 19. I believe at the rapture, after the rapture, Christ will marry his church in heaven with all the holy angels and the angelic beings and the heavenly hosts and uh, then after the wedding supper then i believe we will return with christ to reign and rule with him uh, for a thousand years here on the earth okay and that i believe is the sabbath rest the millennial kingdom uh is i believe on the seventh day which is the seventh thousand year uh the seventh uh not a millennium okay so the first six millennium the first six thousand years uh is the kingdoms of mankind on the earth okay the number six is man and on the seventh day you have christ's kingdom on the earth for that for that millennium okay so we're at the end of day six because it's been six thousand years since adam okay from from adam to jesus yeshua it was 4,000 years, and, and Christ came about 2,000 years ago, so we're ending day 6, and we're about to enter into day 7, which is the Sabbath rest. Well, there will be peace on the earth, okay? And, and remember, Second Peter 3 eight tells us, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Pretty clear to me. Anyhow, let us pray for the nation of Israel that many will come to faith in, in Christ and will resist the beast and the mark of the beast and uh, will be saved. Amen. And I hope to see you all in heaven very soon. And shalom until next time.